Today I'm chilling and we're here with Mr. Eric Gonzalez. And I've just noticed that we're we're pretty much matching, aren't we? I mean, we've got the, the yep. beards, the black, the hats and everything. How are you, man? I've been good, man. Finally, uh, it's good to be uh, back to, to my first interview since I uh, since my last fight. So this is wow. exciting for me. I'm, I'm happy to be doing it then. We're, we're going to have a good time, I'm telling you. We're going to have a good time, man. <laughs> <laughs> So first of all, um, you know, you, you're going into a new promotion and you're going to have to help me out with this pronunciation because Spanish isn't my forte. It's Naciones, is it? That's perfect. It's dead perfect, on. Perfect, perfect. So you're going, and how's, how's this camp been as you're the main event? So quite an important fight. So how's your camp been so far for it? I, I was able to start, well, I was already starting for a camp uh, for late last year, but unfortunately the fighters were turned down me as turned me down as a fight. Mm. So uh, I've had plenty of time to be prepared. So I think I, I would say that I pretty much started uh, right before November. And, uh, you know, so I've had some time to be prepared and be ready. And uh, I'm excited, man. Uh, it's, you know, cause I, this is probably the most prepared I've been for a fight uh, considering that I've been some, I've had so much time off since my last fight. It's been over a year now. Has that been a bit sort of demoralizing for you with people turning you down? You've been in camp since November. Have you just felt like it's a bit strenuous now or it doesn't phase you? Uh, you know, it's going to it's going to happen. It's part of the game. You know, we get to pick and choose who we want to fight sometimes. And uh, I can't blame them. You know, uh, uh, it was a lot of fun. It was it was really tough opponents, too. So I was a little surprised when they said no, considering that I did, was coming off a loss yeah. in my last fight. But I understand it because of the last fight I had was three fights in one night. And I only lost the last one. So, you know, wow. it makes a lot of sense. And, uh, you know, uh, it's not really demoralizing. It's more of like a kind of like a like a kind of like a compliment, you know, knowing that some guys don't want to fight me just due to the fact of my background, because that would be the only like right, you know, assumption to make considering the situation. Mm, yeah. And um, obviously the fight's going to be in Mexico. The car's going to be in Mexico. Do you know if there's um, if fans are allowed in or what are sort of the rules that are going to be there for that fight? Um, I haven't got too much information about it. Uh, I believe they're trying to work on a TV deal. Um, I know it will be streamed. I'm not entirely sure about crowd, but it is Mexico. So it could be a little bit easier rules. You know, there probably will be able to have some fans there. I'm guessing. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. I think I'll be able to find out for sure by next week, if not early, late this week, uh, later on this week is my guess. Probably maybe this weekend it, you know, I'm not entirely sure completely, but I have family in Mexico, so they want to go and they've been asking me all about it. So I mean, I, I want to know as soon as possible for sure. And one one thing that obviously will be at that fight is those uh, Latin ring girls. I mean, they're going <laughs> to they're, they're be hard to not look at in between rounds. That's I, for sure. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be looking at the other way because my girlfriend won't be there. <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> yeah, you can't get caught out. Um, and have, have you fought in Mexico before? I know you fought all around, but have you fought in Mexico before? Yeah, I fought in Tijuana, I fought in Mexicali, and I fought in Guadalajara. Uh, I lost the one in Mexicali to a decision. That was a title fight. I won the one in Guadalajara, and that was one of the best performances I ever had. Uh, left a bloody mess in there on the guy. And then uh, the one in Tijuana, I won to a decision. And I'm actually fighting the guy that I'm fighting. Um, he just fought that guy that I fought in Tijuana uh, wow. this past November, and he uh, he lost to him to a decision. So I was able to watch that fight and that tape, and study was able to study a lot about this guy according to the tape footage that mm -hmm. I saw. Yeah, no worries. And those places that you've you've mentioned, they seem. I mean, I first saw it seems pretty crazy. Have you had any like while you've been fighting, any just sort of like crazy things that have happened in that area? I've been escorted pretty much every single fight afterwards out wow. because of the of the fans and uh, people getting aggressive because I'm uh, I beat the you know I beat the, their hometown guy mm. so uh, it's been very like uh, it's been very interesting as far as when I have to leave the show <laughs> getting escorted out the back and then I'm just like all right let's get out of here <laughs> like going back to the hotel and just chilling there the rest of the night you know that's crazy I know. Obviously, as I said, you're changing promotion, going to be the main event for this. Um, in terms of like looking from a wider perspective, your goals, like is your goal to get in the UFC or is it now? Because there's sort of there's so many of the promotions, like is your goal to just stay fighting and see what happens, or do you be like, I want to be the UFC champ? Uh no, man. I wanna I, I'm aiming for the UFC, uh, you mm -hmm. know, so I, I'm not too far away from it. And I believe that if I finish this fight strong, um, you know, that I should be able to get my contract shortly after. So we'll see what happens. Um, 
one fun at a time. But my ultimate goal is go to UFC, become UFC champ. And, you know, that's my ultimate goal for sure. You know, I wanted to fight the top dogs. And that's the only way to do it is to be on the big show, which is UFC at the moment in our time. Yeah. And before we talk about who you're fighting in your fight, I want to take it back to the beginning and ask, how did you actually get started in MMA? Uh, MMA only caught my interest when I, uh, when I first joined wrestling back when I was in eighth grade. My brother was actually a wrestler. He's really good at, th- at the time. And uh, I wanted to play football. He told me to come into wrestling. I went in for the summer before uh, I hit high school, and I just got mm-hmm. hooked on it. I got hooked on the combat sport of a 1v1, not so much like the team aspect. I love training, being able to train with people and suffering together. But I think the, the competitive edge of uh, you control everything on, on the field or on, on the mat, you know, is just so different compared to having uh, – depending on other people that are on your team. And uh, shortly after the wrestling, I was about 14, 15 years old, I want to say. I started my first MMA class and uh, kind of just was in and out. And then by the, my hit, by the time I graduated, I decided to become a fighter shortly afterwards. Kind of in some trouble and uh, fighting was uh, kind of like more my, it was something I was good at because I used to get a lot of street fights in, in high school. And uh, kind of just kind of stuck to it, man, and went to my MMA classes, stuck through it. And... You know, years later, I'm, uh, I'm professional and doing you know, what I love to do. Yeah, man, I, I love to hear it. And obviously, MMA is so time-consuming. It's such a lifestyle. I mean, do you have anything outside of training that you just love to do in your spare time? Uh, yeah, man, I've been I've been uh, getting back into surfing a lot more. Mm. And uh, I'm a huge gamer. I like yeah. playing on a uh, – I like playing – like, I saw uh, the Twitch escape. on your Instagram, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I play a lot of uh, Escape to Tarkov, man. I've been hooked on that game. It's like a military-style type game that's very realistic. So it's, uh, I've been in, I enjoy those type of games. And uh, that's pretty much what I kind of do in my spare time, you know, and uh, uh, work out with the girlfriend, the usual the usual stuff, you know. Um, I stay pretty busy, though, for the most part. Uh, I don't, you know, as far as streaming and, and mm. I also stream for like a, t- a team out in Vegas, which is oh, a wow. Vegas Inferno. So, and they have their own uh, competitive teams and I've competed out there in Vegas before for Fortnite tournaments. It's pretty cool stuff. You know, just a lot of stuff that's just fun is a hobby, but it's a possibility to make some money on the side too, if, if you're good enough. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, so what are you getting more nervous for at the, a tournament gaming or a fight? Uh, you know what? I think I get more I get more anxious on a on a on a on like a computer almost because yeah, yeah, my yeah. hands my hands get sweaty <laughs> but like in a fight I I feel like I just have so much control because like I'm not I'm fairly new to computers like a couple of years old 3 years old mm. and you have all these kids been doing this since they were toddlers you know and they've been doing it for the rest for all their entire lives so it's like it's kind of like it's not like intimidating but it's almost like damn i gotta and i got pretty good pretty quick but at the same time it's like these kids are just naturally raw dude it's, i got beat by like some 14 year old kid and i was like god damn the kid's so good <laughs> you know but it is what it is and uh but a fight man i just feel like i'm in control man i train so fucking yeah. hard and there's no reason for me to be nervous you know there's always going to be some fight nerves but once i step in the mm. cage and i get hit one time it's all the all the nerves everything just just goes out the goes out the door you know there's no more nerves anymore as soon as i get hit it's just it's just nice and relaxed and i have fun yeah and is is covid affected your training camp at all uh i think it's kind of made it better man um i have been working less and training more now uh because i do have an outside job outside of fighting because i'm not substantially making enough to to you know just to fight only Hmm. and uh working less and being able to to just pretty much get unemployment and, and just train my ass off every day. It's, it's been better, man. There's been more guys in, in, in on the mat. I feel like because there's less work and people are there more are on time. Just do there's less traffic because I'm in LA, man. You know how that LA traffic hits. It's, it's severe. It's, it's, it's harsh when it's a, uh, when open COVID opens, when it open, closes out, man, it's going to be horrific traffic. We're sure back in LA again, you know, it's going to be another hour just to get to the gym. And, uh, I think that uh, I think this COVID thing kind of made the training camp way better and less stressful as far as work-wise. But I mean, you still got to worry about all the other stuff as far as you know, people coming in sick and towards the gym. But everybody's been safe. We haven't had one case caught at our gym, and uh, I'm pretty happy to say that we're pretty clean guys. You know. So would you say like, because it's all you know straightforward there? Does does like the the possibility of COVID coming into your gym? Does that sort of like take your mind off um, training or not really? 
Um, no, I think that, uh, most, I think the guys in our gym are pretty honest. So if, uh, anyone leaves out of town, they make sure to get tested. They stay quarantined for four to five days. So I'm not really too worried about the guys. I, I you know, I trust all my teammates and yeah. we're all looking out for each other. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's been over a year and no one's caught a case. So, you know, I'm not too, I'm not worried about my teammates bringing in COVID or any of that type of situation. I'm more worried about me catching at the store, going grocery shopping, if anything. And let's talk about your fight now. You, you're finding a guy, he's, he's a decent guy, well-rounded. Uh, what what can you tell me about him that really like catches your eye? Uh, he seems about my height. So he's going to, you know, I feel like we're going to be standing at the same height. So that first initially catches my, you know, I won't have that, uh, that reach advantage or that height advantage. So that, I mean, that would really bugs me. Um, he seems a grappler considering I saw his last fight in November mm. of last year. Uh, so he fought very recently. So he's obviously he's been active and he's, he's been training and I don't think he stopped training after that fight. Um, but I'm not, t- you know, who knows, you know, yeah. <laughs> some guys do, some guys do stop training for like a month, you know, and they, and they got to pick back to pick up the camp again. But uh, I see that he was a grappler. Uh, not much of a, He's an okay striker from what I saw. It doesn't seem to have a crazy amount of power, but he, he seems like a very durable, tough guy. Like he's not going to, he's not a quitter and it's going to, I feel like it's going to really take a lot to just break him mentally if I want to, if that is my goal. But, you know, uh, I think that as far as uh, MMA aspect, I think that uh, I'm just uh, levels ahead of him. No, I think uh, I've got to be cheeky. Can you give me a prediction for the fight? How'd you see it going? Uh, it's going to be a finish, man. It's going to be, it's definitely going to be a finish. And uh, I, I think I'll finish it late in the first round. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it'd be cool to see. Definitely. Uh, I'll definitely <laughs> try and watch it. And, you know, you find a lot, you find in Mexico and America, you said you for a lot of places in Mexico. And I got to know when you finish your fight, you step out of the cage, win or lose, what's your go-to food after? I used to, man. See, I've been, I've been out in, southern america so much now like down south that like dude i always go get tacos man tacos really? just, they hit with some hot sauce and a, just a cold cor- cold, cold corona usually because i'm in mexico usually so i just pop one of those and i'm just sad man with my lime and i'm good like that's usually my go-to but if uh if uh i'm out in the states like over here i usually just go for american food man burgers you know some just fattening that is just gonna you know, just put me to sleep right after the hard fight. <laughs> <laughs> so what? So you're saying, what's better, American or Mexican food? If you had to have one for the rest of your life, uh, Mexican food, man. Really? Like my roots are Mexican, so yeah, I'm gonna go Mexican Mexican food for sure. I could pretty much have a burger, technically Mexican style. I get a torta, you know. What about what are the <laughs> trucks saying in LA? I've been to LA a couple, a few times before. Like, what about I've never really experienced the taco trucks. I mean, are there any trucks? Oh, bro, I'm going there. I'm going there for my dinner. Um, yeah, uh, you know, there's a there's a few spots out over here. Um, if you go to LA, there's a ton of spots. Your uh, there's tacos like Gallito. There's there's uh, that's deep in and deep in deep in LA, you know. So it's quite of a drive from even from my house. It's like a twenty minute, twenty five minute drive. But like there's taco st- spots that they're not really don't I don't really remember the names off the top of my head. I just know where they're located, you know, and then, and where I live by. And I usually just go there and hit the taco spots, you know, or even just uh, LBJ's down the street from my house. I usually hit up with my girl. That's usually our go to spot. And guys, you know, the, the guys they run it are full Mexican, you know, like that's why you know it's good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I usually go there, man. And that's usually what I eat. I'm like, you know. My girl has Mexican food, so it makes it easier. I mean, you've got to be remembering the name because if I'm coming to LA, then we're we're going. We've got to hit up some taco trucks. Oh, bro, I'll take you straight to the bro, spots. I'm, man. I'm getting no hungry. Problem. Bro. It's exciting. It's dinner time. <laughs> it That's convenient. That's for sure. Are you, are you in the East Coast? I'm assuming. No, I'm I'm in London. I'm eight hours. Oh out. shit! Damn, yeah, you're so far away. Cool pass. Yeah, seven, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know that. That's a trip, bro. I've never been to London, but I've I've met people at uh. I went to a Raven EDC at Vegas and I met wow. this really cool people from London and we were partying with them for a while. They were like, yo, if you're ever in London, hit me up. And I'm like, all right, yeah. if I go, I will. I still have their number too, but it's a trip. <laughs> I mean, I don't think London really represents the Mexican food well. I mean, we've got like, what, two Chipotle's and a Taco Bell, if that. I don't think it represents, <laughs> you have to bring some food over. It's not, it's not good. It's really not. I might have to go over there and just teach you how to make some Mexican food. Exactly. I, used to run a re- exactly. I used to run a restaurant, so I know exactly. how to Exactly, another Mexican source of income. Well. Well. Get a truck. Yeah, exactly. 
I'll give you all my recipes, and then you can just start making your own Mexican spot out there. Oh man, don't, don't <laughs> get hungry. <laughs> and then um, final question. Um, I got a last question, a bit of a fun one. Um, let's say we're two thousand years back in time, and you're in the Colosseum in Rome, and you have to fight as a gladiator. What we- what's your weapon of choice, and why? Um, I would go with a double double blade sword and a shield. I would do that just because uh, Gladiator, man, that's one of my favorite movies of all really? time. And uh, uh, what was his name? I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Uh, I think he's Gerard. It wasn't Gerard, Gerard Butler. Butler. No, that, he was 300. Yeah, he was 300. It was oh, I, don't, I can't remember, but I know who you're talking. Is it Russell Crowe? They look alike. Is it Russell yeah, it's Crowe? Russell, it, yeah, it's Russell Crowe. Yeah, yeah, good memory. Um, I just love that scene, man, where he has like a shield and he's fighting that king and it just like, I don't know, something about having something to defend yourself, but you still have something to kill, and it's a double-edged blade, so you can cut both sides with it, so you can come from every angle. So that definitely might be my choice of weapons, for sure. Nice, man. Um, and if you've got any sponsors or anything, anyone or anything you want to shout out, the floor is yours. Yeah, a uh, huge shout-out to, first of all, Naciones. You know, without them, we wouldn't be having this interview. Mm-hmm. Uh, shout-out to my uh, management team, Upgrade. Always Upgrade. Shout always uh, keep keeping me updated on everything, getting everything's like these, having you come out and interview me, fellas like me. Uh, you know, huge shout-out to my sponsors, Amerta, Vital Proteins, uh, Punch Gunk, uh, Foreign Genetics. Uh, let me see trying to think of anything else uh box raw uh hk usa man huge love they've been helping me all this camp even before when i thought i was gonna have a camp they were still helping me out i got some really clean gear all this stuff and uh straight to my team fight science mma over in la and my coach uh ian harris you know definitely and thank you also brother for having me on your show and having me uh taking some time out of your day to interview me